Welcome to part three in our three-part series on hydroponic fertilizers. In the first video, we showed the pros and cons of various hydroponic fertilizer options. In the second video, we showed how to mix a two-part fertilizer. And in this video, we'll show how to adjust a leafy green fertilizer recipe based on incoming water source. So let's start by looking at the results of a source water test. This sample was taken directly from the tap and sent to a lab capable of analyzing a complete hydroponic solution. Within a week, they emailed us these results. So some of the things to focus on, EC or electrical conductivity, this one's at 0.3. 0.3 and lower is gonna be great for hydroponics. The source water EC can go up to one, um, depending on your crop. And it's gonna be important to look at what's contributing to your source water EC. So high sodium chloride levels, that's gonna be bad. A cumulative uh, sodium chloride level above 50, and this one we have 19 and 14, so 33. So 33 is less than 50. And that's a good thing. If you have high sodium chloride levels, it can work for certain crops, uh, like some, some herbs like mint and watercress can tolerate higher sodium chloride levels, but other crops like tomatoes and cucumbers are gonna be more sensitive. Next up, the total hardness of your water. This one is using calcium carbonate to measure the total hardness and it has 89 parts per million. Anything around 30 to 50 parts per million is gonna be great for hydroponics. This is gonna keep your pH more stable so you don't have great fluctuations or, or big swings. Anything less than 100 is gonna be good for hydroponics. And if you're in the 100 to 400 range, you might have your pH start to, to gradually rise and you might wanna look at using an acid injection system to maintain your pH. If your test results are above 400, you might need to consider a reverse osmosis filtration system to bring your source water into an acceptable range. Next up, let's look at magnesium, calcium, and sulfate. So these are all essential plant nutrients. And sometimes your source water may contribute a fairly significant amount of each of these. And that will reduce the necessary application rates of magnesium sulfate and calcium nitrate. So if after looking at the results of your source water test, you see that your water is not appropriate for hydroponics, you might wanna consider a reverse osmosis system Often growers, though, will not rely solely on reverse osmosis water, but will add back some original source water to take advantage of the source water's buffering capacity. This is Hort America's hydroponic fertilizer spreadsheet, and this is a great tool for factoring in the macro and micronutrient contributions of your source water, Hort America's hydroponic base fertilizer, calcium nitrate, and magnesium sulfate. So I'm gonna start by plugging in the results from this source water test. The math in this spreadsheet is specific to these brands because it factors in fertilizer purity, which can vary greatly between brands and grades. After adding in the source water test results, a great place to start with these other rates is the recommendation listed on the Port America's 9737 bag. And those recommended rates are down here. This is in milligrams per liter, and there are conversions down below. I like to start by building the recipes in milligrams per liter because one milligram per liter is the equivalent of one part per million, and it will make the math a lot easier. I prefer to figure out the rates in milligrams per liter and then afterwards convert to whatever's easier for you to measure, whether that's grams per gallon, pounds per gallon, or maybe staying in milligrams per liter. So starting with the recommended bag rates, 544, 945, 
and 441. And on the right side, we have reference rates for leafy greens. These are taken from different hydroponic textbooks, observed rates, different universities, University of Arizona's Controlled Environment Ag Center, and some results from different NFT growers. These are commercial growers. And there's a wide range of recommended rates. So let's look at where our fertilizer is now using the source water and the recommended rates on the bag. The nitrogen is at 198, which is within range. The phosphorus is at 16.7, which is at the low end of the range, but Hort America's hydroponic fertilizer, it has an additive called TPA, and this enhances the plant's ability to uptake phosphorus, and a lower phosphorus rate can be used while still growing a healthy crop. The potassium at 172, this is also within range. Calcium is within range. Magnesium within range. Sulfur, iron, all of these are, are looking pretty good. Now, if we go back and look at the source water test, we can see we're getting an addition of 29 parts per million calcium. We may be able to reduce the calcium nitrate level because we're getting the calcium input. So uh, let's see if we can wiggle this down a little bit. Uh, 875, where does that put us? And you can see all these numbers automatically adjust. So at 875, we're at 195, 187, that's still within range. Um, maybe at 900, where is that? Yeah, so that's at 200 and 191, which is great. So we've reduced the calcium nitrate a little bit by accounting for the calcium in the source water. So besides building the initial reservoir, this spreadsheet is also great for amending an existing reservoir. Let's say the reservoir has been used for a few weeks and the grower doesn't want to completely dump and flush the system, but simply wants to amend with what's been drawn out from the nutrient solution. So this water test is from a reservoir that had been running for a few weeks, and you still want to look at some of the same things we did in the initial source water test. So the sodium chloride, the total hardness, and we can take these results and plug them into our spreadsheet. And let's start with our amendments at zero. So now we can go over to the reference rates and see how far off our initial test is from where our goal is. So our nitrogen is definitely low. Our phosphorus is a little low, potassium is low, calcium is low, magnesium is low, sulfur is low, iron is within range, manganese is within range, zinc is within range, boron. Yeah, it looks like all of the micronutrients are within range. So for the most part, we're going to need to amend our macronutrients, these first six. So let's go back. The Hort America's hydroponic base is going to add our nitrogen, phosphorus, and, and our potassium. Our nitrogen can also come from calcium nitrate. So for the most part, our, our goal with the Hort America's amendment is to get our phosphorus and our potassium within our desired range. So let's start with uh, 300. That brings our potassium to 190 our phosphorus to 19, that's, uh, that's within range. We might even be able to drop that a little bit. Let's, uh, let's go to 200, 16 and 159. And that's within an acceptable range. Let's go to our calcium nitrate next. So now we really wanna focus on our nitrogen and our calcium. So our nitrogen is definitely below our desired range. We probably wanna get closer to the 175 to 200. So let's do 500. Now we are a little high, so let's, let's bring that down a little bit. 450, we'll probably still bring that even down a little bit more. 
400. Now we're at 196 on our nitrogen and our calcium at 155 is also within range. And finally our magnesium sulfate, this is going to be the addition of our magnesium and sulfur. So our magnesium is a little low in the range, we could bring that up a little bit, and our sulfur is also a little low compared to what's been used by other growers. So let's bring that up. Let's say we're going to start, uh, let's start around the recommended level, so 441. This is going to bring us fairly within range, uh, possibly a little high, so we could probably bring it down a little bit. Let's go down to 400, 59 on our magnesium, and 79, and that's looking good. So this is how you'd amend an existing reservoir. You start with your water test and then the Horn America's fertilizer to increase your potassium and your phosphorus, potassium and phosphorus. Then move on to your calcium nitrate to focus on your nitrogen and your calcium and then magnesium sulfate for your magnesium and sulfur. You'd also amend with Horn America's fertilizer if any of your micronutrients were deficient. Thank you for watching this series on hydroponic fertilizers. If you have any questions, please contact us at infohortamericas at gmail.com or give us a call. And if you're hungry for more information, check out the Growing Lettuce and Culinary Herbs Hydroponically eGrow with Chris Curry and Brian Krug. I've used some of their information in this video, but if you'd like to get a deeper look into the science of nutrient solutions and hydroponic production methods, I'd highly suggest giving this video a watch. And subscribe to the Hort America's YouTube so you won't miss some of our additional educational series we're going to be putting out. We're going to have one on hydroponic substrates or media and another series on horticultural lighting. Thanks for watching.